my name is Georgius Bactin. And I am John Roy Alpo. We are here today to discuss the three curriculum development model. First is linear model. Linear model. Linear models of curriculum development prescribe a rational step-by-step -step procedure for curriculum development starting with objective A and a rational linear model. Ralph Tyler developed the first model of curriculum development at the University of Law. This model was presented in his book, Principle of Curriculum and Instruction, published in 1949. He argued that curriculum development should be logical and systematic, present a process of curriculum development that follows a sequential pattern starting from objectives to content, learning, experience, and evaluation. Tyler identified three curriculum sources. First, society, second, student, and the third is subject matter curriculum. Workers need to study this source carefully in order to develop a curriculum. He also pointed out the importance of philosophy of education and psychological of learning to screen the objectives that are included in the curriculum. Cyclical model of curriculum development. Psychical model is responsive to need which are ongoing necessitating constant updating of the curriculum process. This model views elements of the curriculum as interrelated and interdependent. It develops after it appears to have models of curriculum. Basically, these models are extension of rational models in that they are essentially logical and sequential approach. This curriculum process of cyclical models called situational analysis. First is Andre Nicola Nichols and Howard Nichols model of curriculum development. It also known as Nichols and Nichols model of curriculum. It was developed in 1976, has been taken to be more representative of the cyclical approach. It indicates that this model is there is no starting point, it has never ending process. But this becomes somewhat confused by Nichols and Nichols who also state that learning needs to be specific specifically plan if a pupil's learning is to be directed toward desired ends. It emphasizes the cyclical nature were continuous process. Here are the five points plan of developmental progression under Nichols Nichols model. First is the situation analysis. It involves the analysis of factors exist in the environment. Second is selection objectives. The scope of objectives should enable students to perform skills. The third one is selection and organization of content it is objectives objectives are selected this involves curriculum designer in making clear statement on what skills and content of students need to attain the fourth one is selection and organization of teaching methods it is involves the relationship between students teachers and materials the the fifth one or the final one is the evaluation. It is thus not only focused on formative and summative assessment, but on the curriculum itself. Next, the advantage, the advantages of Nichols and Nichols model. The educators can continually come back to their work and make changes rather than go back to the beginning and start again every time there is the smallest of changes needed to the curriculum. Disadvantages. Time consuming as situational analysis is long time process. The second one is Wheeler's curriculum developmental model. Wheeler model model of curriculum. It was developed by D. K. Wheeler in nineteen sixty seven. It indicates a continuous cycle. It responsive to changes in the education sector and makes appropriate modification to account for these changes. It helps curriculum developers take correct decisions 
thus encourages active participation of staffs in school-based curriculum. It also it undertakes situational analysis where the context or situation in which curriculum decisions are to be taken and thoroughly studied. There are the stages or the phases of Wheeler's curriculum development model. First is aims, goals, and objectives. The aims cover all the experiences provided in the curriculum. The goals are tied to specific subject or group of content within the curriculum, while the objective describe more specific outcomes delivered at a classroom. Second one is the learning experiences. It is an activity which the learner engage in which the results in his behavior. The third one is selection of content. It what is what we teach. It must be related to validity, significance, utility, interest, and learnat learnability. The fourth one is organization and integration of learning experience and content. It happens with respect to the teaching learning process with school and classroom. The final one is evaluation. It enables us to compare the actual outcomes with expected outcomes. This model set the school objectives as final step in as well as the first. Then, the contextual filters model of course planning. It was developed by Stark, Lothar, Bentley, Ryan, Martins, Ganton, Ren, and Shaw in 1990. Encompassed faculty members' background and associated disciplinary and educational beliefs. It is a cyclical view of curriculum development, the influence and the special role of faculty members in the curriculum planning and development are recognized as a main factor in curriculum development in a higher education. This curriculum development after making course decision, the planner can check with the content consideration and contextual filters. This model is very teacher-centered, given the influence of academic freedom. Faculty members may plan the curriculum based on their own convenience. The model can be improved by putting students as a part of the context influence. I'm Jen Ward Alfom. I have a question to you. What are the three models under cyclical model in curriculum development? What are those three models? model, curriculum model, the contextual filter model. Okay, thank you for your answer. Okay. Dynamic Models of Curriculum Development The dynamic model describes how curriculum workers develop curricula in various worker contexts. It is usually school-based base setting. The dynamic model is not considered as linear or sequence. It can start with any element and proceed in any order. The curriculum elements are seen in flexible, interactive, and modifiable model. Under the dynamic model is Walker's model of curriculum development. It was developed by Dicker Walker in 1971. It also known as a process model. The way of proceeding were not predetermined but negotiated and documents as stakeholders work toward completing the test. A platform consists of various conception, theories, and aims which are the carefully thought out beliefs of the planner. There are three phases of Walker's model, platform, deliberation, and curriculum design. The first one is platform. Walker suggested that curriculum workers with them their individual beliefs, theories, conceptions, point of view, aims, and objectives where they have idea on how to perform their tasks and prepare to discuss. 
Second is deliberations. It involves identifying which facts are needed for means and generating alternatives and considering considering consequences of these alternatives, applying them to practical situation, arguing about, accepting, refusing, changing, and adapting interaction between stakeholders begin and clarification of views and ideas in order to reach a consensus shared of vision. Next is curriculum design. If the curriculum develops actually make decisions which are based on deliberation, it involves planning, decision making, and actual development of curriculum. This decision affect curriculum documents and material production. Next one is scaled back curriculum development model. It was developed by Malcolm Skelbeck in 1976. This curriculum workers may start from any phase in interrelated and follow up a systematic sequence. The result of situational analysis provides strong basis for asking curricular decision for all the succeeding phases of curriculum. It views such as design as a means whereby teacher modify and transform pupil experience through providing insight into cultural values, interpretative frameworks, and symbolic system. There are five steps of Skelbeck model. The first one is situational analysis. Both external and external situation analysis. External includes educational system requirements and challenges. Example, examination, curricular project, and flow resources in school. External includes pupil aptitudes, abilities, teacher values, attitudes, skills, and experience. Second is goal formulation, or it also known objectives. Assign a decision-making role to teachers, senior staff, and principal in the development objectives for the school-based curriculum. Next is program building, which encompasses the selection of subject matter for learning, the sequencing of teaching learning episode, the deployment of staff, and the choice of the appropriate supplementary materials in Minja. Next is interpretation and implementation. It involves actual implementation of the curriculum by faculty members or teacher. It is where the actual teaching and learning of the student take place. The last one is monitoring, feedback, assessment, and construction reconstruction. It is a phase. It is a phase or step where the goals and objectives of the curriculum including the design and the selection of all the curriculum elements are evaluated. Next is Isner Artistic Approach to the Curriculum Development. This curriculum, also known as the Connoisseur Shift Model, it was developed by Elliot W. Eisner in 1975. He published the book The Educational Imagination. He believed that there is a need to develop a new theory that recognizes the artistry of teaching which is useful in helping teachers develop those art. It is an approach to evaluate emphasis the qualitative appreciation. According to him, it is important to get into the details and what is actually happening inside the classroom. It is developed and proposed the ownership model because he believed that knowledgeable or expert evaluator can determine whether a particular curriculum program has been successful using a combination of skills and experience. Here are the seven outline of artistic approach. First is the goals and priorities. The need to consider less well-defined objective as well as implicit ones. The needs for deliberation and talking through priorities. Second is content of curriculum. Option to consider and selecting curriculum and specific source, such as student interests, community needs, are also known null curriculum. Third one is Types of learning opportunities. Emphasis on transforming goals and content into learning events that will be of significance to students. Fourth is organization of learning opportunities. Emphasis on 
nonlinear approach in order to encourage diverse student outcomes. Fifth is organization of content areas. Emphasis in cross-curricular organization of content. Then, model of presentation and mode of response is use of numbers of modes of communication to widen educational opportunities for students. The last one is types of evaluation procedure. It is use of a comprehensive range of procedure at the different stages of the process of curriculum development. The last one is Pawilin's model for development curriculum. It was developed by Greg Tabios Pawilin. It was developed to help workers in developing a curriculum that is relevant and appropriate to the Philippine context. Here are the Pawilin's model for developing curriculum. First is the curriculum sources. Our general factor that influence or affect curriculum and development curriculum in the decision making in the macro level. There are two levels of curriculum development, the macro level and micro level. Macro level is includes the general or overall process of curriculum development. Macro, micro level it is focused on the specific phase or phases of any specific context like school-based curriculum development. There are three curriculum sources in the models, the learners, the society, and discipline. Learners is that in the curriculum, it is important to knowing the needs, interests, thinking style, gender, and other variables are gen significantly data in developing curriculum. That society also consider as a source of a curriculum, knowledge, about the society context in which the curriculum will be implemented includes cultural value, beliefs, and economic system affect curricular development because the learners are all integral part of the society. This one is discipline. It was provide data for making decision as to what content should be included in the curriculum and how to organize the content of the curriculum. Next one is Curriculum influences the specific factor that affects the development of the curriculum and decision making in the micro level. The idea of the curriculum influence was adapt adapted from the model of Stark and Latoke 1997, can be grouped into three the external, organizational, and internal. External factor are social factor that directly influence curriculum decision making this factor as society, market demand, government, and disciplinary. Next is internal influence are those that are related to the school like member, student develop discipline, and program mission. Third one is organizational influence are school factor but they are more concerned with the governments of the support system like school resources, and program relation and by the nature curriculum sources and influence it serve as the basis for the selecting and making decision about the various elements of the curriculum content learning experience and evaluation here are the process for developing curriculum under Powell's model first is situational analysis the first phase Analysis the context in which the curriculum is developed. It analysis includes a study of the different curriculum sources, which is the student, society, and discipline. Second one is selection of goals and objectives. The result from situational analysis is some cases if the government or the university prescribe the curriculum goals and objectives as features will be considered as a part of the internal or external influences that will be studied in the situational analysis the third one is development of curriculum standards take place after the situational analysis and selection of the goal and objective First is developing a comprehensive set of content standard by exam examining the various sources and influences. Second is aligning standard with several criteria. Third is securing teacher input revised and improved standard as 
expert to validate the standards and develop the final draft of standards divided into content standard, skill standard, and values. The fourth one is selection of content or subject areas. It is a phase where developed curriculum standards are used go to reflect subject or courses to be included in the curriculum. The fifth one is selection and organization of a learning experience. It includes selecting learning activities, organizing instructional plans, and selecting instructional materials to be used in the implementing the curriculum. Sixth is implementation. It involves the actual imp implementation of the curriculum by faculty member. It is where the actual teaching and learning take place. The last one is evaluation, the final phase, a phase where the goals and objectives of the curriculum, including the design and selection of all the curriculum elements, are evaluated. After the result evaluation, the curriculum development process will go back to situational analysis to examine the needs and include necessary change and demands from curriculum sources and objectives. Hi, Jen Ward Alfon. Um, yes, yes. I have a question to you about your discussion in linear model. Here your question. Who among the model that you discuss is your, is your favorite and why? Thank you for your wonderful question. One of my favorite model is Tyler model because this um, this model is one of the best known model for curriculum development. Known for the special attention, it gives the planning basis because this model is so beneficial. Um, many curriculum developers have followed this model. Okay, Miss Georgie, I have a question for you. Um, what is your learning about the models that you discuss? Okay, thank you for your questions. Um, my learning is about under the psychical model is um, those three models are continuous process of curriculum development like um, Nicole Senecal's model, Wheeler's model, and contextual filter model. And also the dynamic model is um, summarizing the properties of interest in the study system and predicting how those properties will change over time. I think those curriculum model is an effective and vital framework for the successful teacher to provide an outcome for the teacher to methodically methods and openly map out of the reason for the usage of different teacher learning and evaluate methodologies in the curriculum. And also this um the three curriculum development is important of a school so that um, they can decide what course standard or competencies that um, that they gave to the students of the school. And also it helps to the teacher to um, organize his or her lessons about that curriculum. That's all. Thank you. Once again, I am Georgie Espasin. I am Janward Alpon.